Have you ever heard of anything scarier than black holes? They have the power to devour anything from dust to massive stars. Here we are showing a recording of a star with the mass equivalent of our well-known sun being completely swallowed by a black hole. It does not stop there. They are so hungry that they even swallow light. However, something that not everyone knows is that there is the opposite of the black hole and that they can be just as scary. They are known as white holes and a recent discovery has caused great excitement in the scientific community. But how are these white holes formed? Or rather, what are they? Could they affect your life in some way? Stay with us as we dig deeper into these questions to understand how the discovery of the white hole could change everything. For an easier understanding, we need to remember how black holes appear. Keep in mind what we're going to say and talk about next, as some aspects also fit in cases of white holes, even if in the opposite way. There are three main types of black holes, primordial, stellar, and supermassive. Primordial black holes are the smallest and are believed to be as small as an atom, however, with the mass of a large mountain. Stellar black holes are more common and they can be up to 20 times the mass of the sun, but are relatively small. Supermassive black holes are the largest and can have a mass greater than a million suns combined, but still fit inside of a ball the size of the solar system in diameter. Science believes that most large galaxies have a supermassive black hole at its core and that they are created at the same time as their respective galaxies. The size of a black hole depends on the mass size of the galaxy. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way is known as Sagittarius A and could swallow up to 4 million suns. With a bit of room, it would fit inside a circle about the size of the sun. Due to this comes the gravitational force of black holes, which is caused by the large amount of matter compressed into a very small space. But how do black holes arise? Well, according to science, primordial black holes were created at the beginning of the universe, while stellar black holes are formed when the center of a massive star collapses on itself, causing a supernova. And as we mentioned before, supermassive black holes are created at the same time as their galaxies. It is very difficult to see a black hole because even light cannot escape it, but scientists can observe the effects of an enormous gravity on the stars and gases around them. When a star is orbiting a black hole, you can see high energy light produced. The black hole's gravity is so powerful that it sucks in the star's outer gases creating a disk around it that's called an accretion disk. This gas reaches extremely high temperatures and releases X-ray light in all directions while it's swallowed by the black hole. This light can be measured by NASA telescopes, and it is thanks to them that scientists can learn more about black holes. The sun will never become a black hole, though, simply because it isn't big enough. Still, the sun will not exist as we know it forever. It is estimated that in millions of thousands of years, it will become a giant red star. After that, when all its fuel is used up, it will turn into a glowing ring of gas called a planetary nebula. Eventually, all that's left of the sun will be a giant white dwarf star. Saying that reminded me a lot of white holes. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, white holes are the exact opposite of black holes. As black holes swallow anything that enters their horizon of events, white holes expel everything that enters, or rather, everything that tries to enter. A white hole is a region in which space-time flows inescapably outward. They have an event horizon that prohibits any matter from entering, even the light. White holes are believed to scatter light that radiates at levels identical to the strength of a black hole. If a spacecraft were to fall into a white hole, the force of the gamma rays would devastate the spacecraft and crew. And by the way, even if the ship was strong enough to withstand that energy, the space-time around the white hole is organized in such a meticulous and interesting way that the acceleration required to enter it increases more and more and more the closer you get in. In short, entering a white hole requires much energy, much more than the whole entire system has to offer. Isn't that crazy? White holes essentially are celestial objects that have an enormous amount of mass concentrated in a very small space. The theory of white holes was developed based on Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, which shows us that gravity is a distortion of time and space. And using Einstein's equation to find the mass in an empty field or in an area without matter, Carl Schwarzschild, a German scientist, found the metric that mathematically describes an idealized black hole. This equation he came up with would represent a 100% paralyzed black hole that has no charge or change, essentially what we call an eternal black hole because it does not change its size and it has always existed. 
The equation also demonstrates that in the idealized black hole, time becomes space and space becomes time. Reversing the roles in this way causes the black hole's singularity to be found at some time in the inevitable future, instead of somewhere. In summary, white holes are different from black holes in that they have a singularity in the past rather than the future. All that being said raises an important question. Why do some scientists still doubt the existence of white holes? Well, according to them, the fact that white holes are proven mathematically does not mean that it's possible for them to happen. Exactly for this reason, white holes are termed as an impossible possibility by some members of the scientific community. So while they don't expect to see such an event through a telescope, they also don't rule out the possibility. That's why white holes are controversial celestial objects. Some scientists even argue that they violate the second law of thermodynamics that says that entropy, which is the measure of chaos and disorder in the universe, must always increase or remain the same. Entropy can be thought of as an increase in the number of possible states for particles in a system, like the rubber of a house that can be used to build various other structures. Black holes, on the other hand, increase the entropy of the universe by consuming matter with low entropy like planets. However, white holes are different in that way because they decrease the overall entropy of the universe, which would violate the second law of thermodynamics. This very same logic is used by physicists to argue that time cannot go backwards, yet none of this proves that white holes don't exist. Let's analyze what the physicist, leader of the quantum gravity research group at the University of Ike Marcells in France, Carlo Rovelli said. Carlo stated that once a black hole could no longer evaporate or shrink due to space-time constraints, the black hole would experience a quantum leap or external pressure and would turn into a white hole. Before we continue though, I do want to ask you to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Your subscription and like are very important for our growth and to help this channel deliver the best content. Okay, now returning to black holes. Taking this into account, we can conclude that black holes turn into white holes almost instantly. However, as we are external observers, we continue to see a black hole for thousands of years due to time and gravity dilation. If the refer theory is correct, black holes formed in the early years of the universe should be prepared to die and explode into cosmic rays at any moment. That's a scary thought, isn't it? What if I tell you that maybe we've seen it happen already? In June 2006, a NASA satellite recorded an enormous and powerful burst of gamma rays with particular properties called a GRB 060614, challenging the scientific consensus on black holes. These gamma ray bursts are usually associated with a supernova and they fall into the category of short if they last up to 2 seconds or long from 2 to 30 seconds. But the GRB 060614 lasted an incredible amount of 102 seconds and was not associated with any stellar explosions. The GRB 060614 emerged in a galaxy with a very small number of stars that could lead up to no long bursts. It was questioned that this burst of energy came out of nowhere, but years later the scientific community raised the idea that what we saw in 2006 was perhaps a white hole. But why should we believe in this hypothesis? Well, what was seen in the GRB 060614 represents exactly what one would expect to see in a case of a white hole. That being, of course, an impressive and unstable source of energy and matter that breaks down after its formation, normally from a small point to see. The theory grows stronger every single day as scientists cannot find another explanation for what happened in 2006. Tell me in the comments what do you believe? Did we have the first discovery of a white hole in the GRB 060614? What's your opinion about this? This is a very complex theory, so therefore I would love to read your comments down below. Did you like the video? If you did, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Thank you so much for listening.